Welcome to the Dojo Young Samurai. Konnichiwa Young Samurai, welcome back to another Ninja Night Read. My name is Chris Bradford, I'm the author of the Young Samurai books and the Bodyguard books. And I'm going to be reading to you uh, from my Young Samurai sampler, The Way of Fire. Now we're on chapter 11, and in the past chapter that's just happened, it's been pretty dangerous. Akiko and Jack have got to the top of the volcano. Yamato and Saburo have been left behind and due to either exhaustion or the fumes making themselves sick. Luckily, Jack and Akiko have managed to find the flowering cactus. But as Jack plucks the flower from the cactus, the volcano erupts. Chapter 11, Eruption. There was a thunderous roar and the ground shook. Jack fell to his knees, clinging onto the rocky outcrop for dear life. The lava field began to spit apart, blood red lines spidering out across its surface like veins. Jack fumbled for his gourd. Pulling off the stop, he dropped the precious flower inside. Akiko was waving frantically for him to join her. Ignoring the danger, he scrambled to his feet and ran across the fractured lava, jumping between the most solid-looking parts before they sunk into the magma. He made it across, just as another tremor rocked the mountain, and he stumbled into Ikiko's arms. They ran blindly through the smoke and fumes, heading down slow, past the shrine to the snow line. Both soon caught up with Yamato, who was making his way down as fast as he could, his face now filled with terror. Did you get it? He cried. Jack could only nod. Behind them, a great plume of smoke rose into the sky, blocking out the sun. They raced through the snowfield as the volcano awoke from its slumbers. An explosion detonated deep underground, and the earth was rent apart. The snow to their right dropped away. A great hiss of scalding steam shooting from the gaping, gaping hole as lava poured forth, half running. Half falling, the three of them fled down the mountainside. Reaching the old lava fields, they could now bound down in huge leaps, their impact cushioned by the thick layers of volcanic ash. Mount Haku shook again, clots of magna bursting forth from its summit. As rocks rained down, fissures opened up around them, and fresh streams of lava bled from the volcano's wounded sides. Knocked off their feet, they rolled head over heels down the slope. An avalanche of debris and molten lava now chased them. It surged down the gully they'd, managed, uh, they'd escaped into. Scrambling up its sides, they just managed to reach the crest before the flow engulfed them all. But now they were trapped, cut off on either side by rivers of lava. The three young samurai, numb with shock, gazed at the hellish landscape of smoke, ash and fire. Jack couldn't believe they got this far and found the cactus, only to be stopped by a volcanic eruption. It was as if the mountain god was angry with them for stealing its flower. It's all over, cried Akika, wiping the grimy ash from her tear-stained face. There must be some way off this ridge, insisted Jack, but when he looked around, he realised the grim truth. They were stranded on an island in a sea of boiling lava. Over here, came a faint cry. On the opposite side of the gully, beside a clump of green trees, Saburo stood, waving his arms and jumping up and down in desperation. We're cut off, shouted Yamato. Saburo lowered his arms despondently. Can you still escape? asked Jack. Yes, said Saburo, nodding his head. This gully's clear on this side. Jack looked at his friends. They knew what had to be done. I'll throw you the gourd, he shouted. It has the flower in it. You must get it to Emmy. But what about you, cried Saburo. Jack didn't reply as he launched the gourd towards his friend. The answer was obvious. So young samurai, another chapter, and we're leaving it on a cliffhanger. If you want to find out what happens next, tune in tomorrow at my YouTube channel, Chris Bradford, author, and I'll see you there, and I'll read that next chapter. In the meantime, sayonara.